Are you a musician, singer, or lover of music? Have you been trying to figure out how music recordings even work or how to get started? Well, today you clicked on the right video because I will be teaching you in this video how to record your vocals using a condenser microphone. So my favorite type of microphone to use when recording vocals is a condenser microphone. Why? Because if you're a singer on a tight budget and looking for a microphone to help you, then a condenser microphone will give you all the resources you need to make better music quality. Now when I say tight budget, I don't mean just go for any cheap microphone that you find on Amazon and think that it's going to be alright, because not all microphones record the same. <laughs> I've learned from a lot of singers on YouTube that microphones have different sound qualities and match people's voices differently. So it's important to choose a microphone that suits your voice the right way. For example, I tend to use this MXL880 microphone. I use it a lot for my vocals and pretty much my guitar playing in general. It's a condenser microphone that I bought from my buddy Ryan. He's a musician and he also has a music Instagram and great guitar player if you guys want to check out his profile down below in my description. You're more than welcome to do so. But yeah, this condenser microphone I use for almost all of my videos except for if I'm going to be using more treble and don't want as bassy of a tone for my music. But this microphone is clear, it's articulate, put a pop filter right in front of it and you're good to go. You can find the upgraded version of this microphone on Amazon, which I have the link in the description below. There are plenty of cheap and affordable microphones that have just as great a quality as any expensive microphone, and they only cost under $100. These microphones are the newer NW800, the Zingyu BM800, the PIY Painting Cardioid Condenser Microphone, and the MXL990. Now hold on, before you go and purchase your next microphone, I would at least do some more research on if this microphone is good for you. Remember, all microphones have different types of quality. You want to make sure that this microphone that you're choosing is the right quality for you. I personally bought the MXL880 from my friend about four years ago when I was just starting to learn more about music recording and how to record my vocals, which I should have made a video like this a long time ago. <laughs> it wasn't too expensive, it was a good deal, and it was a great brand. And it works for me. I mean, check out my other music videos on this channel and you can see and hear the type of quality this microphone gives out that it receives and puts into the music. So when you're recording your vocals, how do you know how to record your vocals? What kind of distance do you need to be from the microphone to get the greatest sound quality? Now there are many sound engineers and music producers on this platform that can give you that kind of teaching. But what I want to show you, when you're recording with a condenser microphone like the MXL880 or any type, you want to make sure you have your microphone at least six inches away from your mouth. Not up to here because you're gonna get a very bassy type of tone and I don't have it plugged in at the moment so that's why it's not really happening. But you're gonna get a very bassy type of tone. The further you have your microphone away from you, the better and more narrow it sounds. I want your stupid love, love, ooh. I want your stupid love. Now if you were to get a pop filter for your vocals, which I highly recommend you get, you would put it in between like this, and it distances yourself from the microphone, but it also helps with getting rid of that sensitivity and noise distortion from your voice. You know sometimes when you're listening to a podcast or watching someone speak really close into their microphone, and you can hear the T's and the P's and the S's and the K's, and it just sounds so sensitive and it's, it's getting to your ears? Well that's because they're probably not using a pop filter or they're just really freaking close to the microphone. So you want to be sure to distance your mouth at least six inches away from your microphone when recording vocals or at least speaking into your microphone. For a podcaster, their situation may be different because they may want to have a more broad and beefy sound that carries through the microphone. But if you're a singer, you want to have that mixture of treble and bass. You want to have a nice balance of that because honestly, if you want to get your music on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Prime Music, any of that stuff, that's what they listen to. <laughs> so again, this popper right here, which I have it curved because you know, when I have it against my mic stand. I usually have to fold it a certain way. Which to use the popper, this little thing, you just kind of twist it and then you twist it back onto the microphone stand, whatever you're using. It's pretty simple, pretty easy, but if you do have any questions or concerns on how to use it, I can create a video teaching you how to put the pop filter onto a music stand. But yeah, I couldn't record any vocals without this pop filter. It literally saves the day. I want you to try an experiment. You have voice memo on your phone. I want you to put your phone take out my phone. I want you to put your phone right here, a certain distance away, and I want you to speak into your pop filter, and then take it away, speak some more, 
and just hear the difference of your sound quality. Hear how the pop filter has made a big difference in your sound, the tone of voice, and how you're probably not hearing those very sensitive articulations like S's and T's and P's and C's and K's because it can get kind of annoying when you don't have the pop filter on there. So I would definitely invest into one of these pop filters. You can find them on Amazon for like $9.99, the cheapest. I have a link to these pop filters in my description below if you're interested in purchasing them now. Another important thing that you need to know about condenser microphones is they have two different sides. One side for receiving the noise, the sounds, the music, whatever you're recording into this microphone, and they have a backside to filter out the axis noise. But of course, this part doesn't always get everything out and noise canceled. That's why people put up acoustic foam panels or they make their own panels on their walls by putting towels around and getting two by fours and then mounting them on their walls or around their speakers. It makes a huge difference, believe it or not. I have a few acoustic foam panels that are hanging towards the side of my wall and they help just a little bit. But one of my greatest tricks is putting a blanket right behind this microphone. So when I'm recording like here, usually put a blanket not too close to it, but at least a little further away to noise cancel out some of that access noise and sound so that your voice becomes more clear and concise. And of course, if you don't believe me, you can hear it from so many other musicians and audio engineers on YouTube. They're just gonna paraphrase it differently, but I'm telling you, the acoustic foam panels and the other big panels that you can create with just towels or just, you know, construction type of those panels will enhance and noise cancel out your music like no tomorrow. Definitely something to look into. You can find the acoustic foam panels that I was talking about in my description below. Now you have your microphone, you have your pop filter, but how are you gonna plug it in? You need an XLR cable. This is a GLS Audio XLR cable that I just recently purchased on Amazon and it's actually really great quality. So this XLR cable will attach to the bottom of your microphone. Gotta just place it in there, see where the holes line up. Oh, this is taking quite a bit. I know what I'm doing, guys. <laughs> there you go, it's connected. And then when you need to disconnect it, there's a little button right here, you just push in, just connect. So you can just practice doing that if you wish. The ending of it right here, this goes into the outputs of your audio interface. So this is what we like to call the male end. The female end right here, disconnect, connect. And then the male end goes into the output of your audio interface. Now the XLR cable I was using before I purchased the GLS Audio XLR cable was this, I don't know what the brand is, but it's an XLR cable I bought from my friend when he gave me my microphone. This XLR cable is actually a VRT high quality audio XLR cable that does really great for recording. Although I've been using it for four years and it eventually just died out, so I needed to get another one. But yes, for anyone looking to record their music, their vocals, guitar, anything like that, I would highly suggest investing into an XLR cable like this, the GLS Audio XLR cable. And I understand that you wanna find the most affordable price and music and video equipment are extremely expensive. I know, believe me, I'm in that boat. But you gotta remember, the product is priced for a specific reason because it'll do you wonders. It'll help you with your performance. Imagine a $3 million guitar being sold for only 20 bucks. Now, I'm sure in our dreams that's possible, which I'm gonna try to make it happen tonight. But it's not possible in reality because the making of the guitar, the sound quality it has, everything all together, Everybody wants it. So to conclude with my rants about music and video products, you wanna find the best reasonable price and something that works for you is professional and will enhance your music the way you want it to. All right, so let's recap. How do you record your vocals when using a condenser microphone? Well, for one, you wanna make sure you're using the right microphone for your sound recording, your podcast, your music, your music video. Again, I like using the MXL880. I have two other microphones. This is my Shure SM58 dynamic microphone. I don't typically use this all that much because I'm still getting used to the dynamic microphone quality, how it works, and figuring out my way through that boat. This is a microphone where you don't need the extra 48V power to power on your microphone. With the condenser microphone though, you do need that. But we can cover dynamic microphones in a different video. This newer NW700 is a microphone I highly, highly advise you start off with if you're starting to record with condenser microphones. And I mean this because this microphone does have great audio quality and when you mix it and do your post-production stuff and whatever music doll you're using, you can make the audio quality from this microphone sound amazing. I've used this microphone for guitar recordings, for vocal recordings. The reason I don't like to use it as much sometimes is because I have a powerful voice and sometimes I sing really harshly and then sometimes things can get a little wonky. 
but it's still a great microphone for your vocals. Something to start out with, and I would really advise you get this microphone. It's the newer NW700. You can find it in the link in my description. For the price and the quality, this microphone is definitely worth it if you're just starting to get into music recording. So yeah, you want to make sure you have the right microphone that works for you. You also want to make sure that you're singing into the correct side of the microphone, where the marker is, not the back. The correct, the front, the marker. Always remember, the marker. That's how you know where the sound is coming. You will want a pop filter. So your voice or the sensitivity of your voice will not get distorted and sound on your recording. And then lastly, you will need your XLR cable if you want to connect your microphone to your audio interface. And again, this is a great XLR cable. You can find many others online, but I would highly advise the GLS Audio XLR cable for if you're just getting started with music recording, you're in your home studio, and you know, you just, you just wanna practice. Really, you wanna take your music seriously. So I would highly advise getting this. If you guys got value out of my video, please make sure to hit that like button and comment down below how I helped you or what I could have done better or something that you're still missing and not understanding about recording into microphones. I've been recording vocals with the MXL 880 microphone for four years and I'm still learning more and more as I go along the process. If you like this video, you may also like my other music video where I talk about how to edit music videos for YouTube. And if you like punk covers, then definitely check out my punk covers playlist. It's waiting for you. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell for more music related content coming your way soon. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Keep recording, get that microphone, and I'll see you in the next video.